Hey, good morning, friends. Welcome to Witness Wednesday. Here's the place where we learn to walk <clears throat> in our assignment and loving God through doing what He commands. I'm Crystal Roy with the Kingdom Exchange, and I'm here to share with you what God is doing through my life, for my life, because it's not just for me, it's for you too. And today I'm running a bit late because I got a huge assignment from the Lord and I had to capture what he was saying and I'm looking forward to it coming to fruition. And I think I know why I was able just now to hear it, to get it, to receive it. And I want to teach you how to do that too. <clears throat> So this channel is for equipping the saints of God to do his work on the earth, to complete our assignment that we, I believe, were with God, a part of his heart before we were born, and he talked to us about our assignment. And we said, yes, I'll go do that. Um, and then we're born, as my husband would say, um, I've had a sleep, so I forgot. Uh, but the Holy Spirit is here to remind us of what our assignment is. Now, for me, I only wanted to be a mother and a housemaker, and I wanted to take care of a husband and a home. Uh, but that is not what my life has looked like. But in exercising what God has brought me through, <clears throat> I've been able to become the daughter that he can use um, throughout the world, and especially the Middle East. And when you look at me, you just think I'm a white bread Southern girl born in a small town of about 25,000 people, and all those things are true. But I'm also pita bread, and I'm tough tune, and I am samosas, and I am sangak, so I am sliced white bread, but I have um, had, through the Lord, an opportunity to touch many nations, many cultures, many tribes, and many tongues, and I thank God for that. And um, who would have known? But here we are. <clears throat> but let me tell you how to walk with God how to know his will for your life. That's super important. And how more importantly, to be transformed into who he wants you to be. So as you walk through your assignment, you can do so with good character and lifting up Jesus for all men to be drawn to him. Now, when I say of good character, I'm not saying I'm better than you. I have things that, you know, need to be purged. And I've I have things I'm sure need to be delivered. So one is crucifying my flesh and the other is casting it out. And we have to do both. You can't have only one side of that coin. You have to be delivered and you have to be disciplined. Those are both huge parts of what Jesus brought to us through all of the Gospels and through the book of Acts. <clears throat> that was his intention. Excuse me for clearing my throat. I want to talk to you today about slaughtering the oxen. Um, last Friday, the last day of the year, I got it. Now, I'm an older Christian woman. I have been saved for, gosh, <clears throat> 48 years. Uh, that's a lifetime. And many of you could be much, much younger than that. And I've learned and walked through things with the Lord, with the tools I had. But what I like to do is take all the tools in my tool belt and give them to you when you're ready. If you're the kind who wants me to download into you, that's me, that's my personality. Go ahead and download it in so I can do it. I just need to execute, right? Um, but if you need just one tool at a time and then you need 10 months to work on that tool, I appreciate that about you, but we don't have time. So I wanna urge you to ask the Lord to put you on his timeline with his pace. And that's the best place anyone can be. But I want to talk to you about last Friday. <clears throat> okay, the Lord three years ago, let's back up three years, when the Lord told me something very specific to get ready for. And I was kind of like, oh. And I said, what does that look like? And he told me quite specifically what that looked like. And I said, Lord, uh, that's, that's aggressive. <laughs> because it meant self-discipline. And that's hard. Who wants to do that? But here we are at the beginning of 2022. And let's do have that ugly word, resolutions. Let us resolve 
to follow Christ in the way he intends for us this year. So what does that look like for you? Let's write that down. For me, it is a specific weight. <laughs> and God has done other things about my weight. Um, I had a promise that he said I wouldn't receive until I weighed a specific weight. Now you're going to say, mm -hmm, Crystal, you're crazy. That's going to meddling. That's gone. You've gone to meddling now. <sighs> but... That's exactly what happened. And God blessed me. He blessed my life. He blessed my family with giving me a wonderful gift. But I couldn't have been seen until I looked a certain way. And that is where we are today, okay, for the next phase that God has for my life. He's told me what I am to weigh. Well, for three years... I've been asking for supernatural weight loss or, right? And I, I got very close and then I messed up. I, I'm very close again. But last Friday, I was like, I'm stressed. I can go eat that thing, right? It's, it's like um, I heard a lady talking about her husband who they didn't, make ends meet when they were getting more and more in debt. But he insisted that every Friday he was going to Red Lobster because he'd worked hard. He was going to have his Red Lobster. And it's putting them further and further in debt because that was not a part of what they were able to budget. And that sounds very simple, but let's, look, let's not judge the man. We're all there, right? There's something that we deserve and we're going to get it anyway. And that's what I'm asking you to bring to the altar. What does that look like when you're going to bring something to the altar? Okay, first of all, you have to make a decision. In the Old Testament, <clears throat> when the um, people of Israel were going to bring something to the altar to burn as um, you know, the different types of offerings that they had, they had to prepare. They had to set aside a time. They had to prepare the offering. Um, in order to prepare the offering, they had to maybe make money and buy it, right? Or grow it or breed it. And then they had to select it. Then they had to take it to the priest. And if it were a gift offering, if it were, um, you know, a burnt offering for sin, you know, all these different things, they had to prepare and plan. <clears throat> so Friday, when the Lord just dropped in my spirit how to do this, it worked. It worked right there. <laughs> And so I didn't go treat myself because I deserved it. And that would have been outside my carbs that I decided for myself. Well, my body decides what carb maximum I need. I was like, oh my God. I said, Lord, uh, as an act of my will, I'm going to place this thing on the altar <clears throat> for you. Because I desire your plans for me and not my plans for me. Even though I love that. That's my favorite bakery. I'm within two miles of, you know, a 50 mile radius of my house. I'm within two miles, Lord, of my favorite bakery. I could just go get some cake squares. But no, I place it on the altar because there's a bigger plan than just, you know, lifetime on the hips from a moment on your lips. So I was like, oh my gosh, Lord, this is how you do it. So the next several days were very easy because as something would come up, I would say, okay, I'm placing that on the altar until yesterday. <clears throat> and at lunch with a client, I did. As an act of my will, I consecrated my lunch to my body for the healing, for the nourishment of my body to weigh the weight the Lord has told me to weigh. There was bread, delicious freshly baked bread with all the goodness and the butter. I said, Lord, I am putting this bread on the altar because your desire for me is more important than what I want to eat right now. Which was great until I got home later in the day and I had a friend come over with some treats. Well, he's a guest Eat the things that are put before you, right? We can pick and choose the Bible verses to support what we're doing. But for me, the Lord has shown me, told me, 
exactly what he wants me to weigh. I did not put that on the altar. I partook. I'm not going to say to eat something is a sin, but I am going to say if we're going to be successfully living the Christian life and doing and being what God has called us to do and called us to be, and remember Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey what I command. Now for me, not you, for me, about 20 years ago, the Lord told me no more caffeine. And I was like, oh. Okay, no more caffeine. Now, every now and then, I'll have some caffeine. And it's no big deal, right? But uh, that's not the same as reduce your caffeine. It's no more caffeine. So what the Lord taught me last Friday actually grew yesterday whenever I went outside my eating plans for the day and I had something because someone was sharing and I'm just being, you know, company. And I realized when I looked up the carbs of what I had eaten, whoa, baby, it was um, three times what my maximum carbs were. The one piece of this was three times what the maximum carbs were my, that my body needs to weigh what I need to weigh. And I realized at that moment I need to, at the beginning of every day, consecrate my body to the Lord and place that on the altar. So as an act of my will, I've got some sticky notes together. Whatever the Lord has asked me to, you know, no more caffeine, I'm placing it on the altar in the morning, like just with a sticky note. Okay? I'm not talking about honoring God with our works by doing, but I am honoring Jesus who said, if you love me, you will obey what I command. So for me, I'm not saying for you, for me, caffeine is not going to have me get closer to the Lord because God wants my obedience. Okay. And caffeine has certain effects in the body. We know the short-term effects. The long-term effects is it literally kills your adrenal glands. And if you're going to have strength and stamina to match your days, those have to be in tip top shape, right? And the Lord knows how my body functions. And he, he told me, he didn't ask me, he told me, no more caffeine. And if you don't hear from the Lord like that, it's okay. I'll teach you how to hear from the Lord like that. It's, it's Well, I'm going to say it's pretty easy, but it does require you to be very careful about everything you're hearing. And when you hear and what you hear. But I want to talk to you about how to place the things on the altar so that you can obey God and walk in his assignment. And that means at the beginning of the day, anything the Lord has told you, go ahead and write it on a sticky note. And if you are to do something, you're placing that on the altar, which means if you are doing something, you're deselecting not doing something, right? So we make choices. We make a million choices a day. And for me, I know part of my altar is a maximum number of carbs a day. And for me, Carb Manager is an app on my phone. It's very easy. And you can forget what you've had to eat. My goodness, we said that all the time. I forgot what I had for breakfast. Well, if you record it and you know, for me, my maximum carbs to lose weight per day is 29. It's very low. Um, but I mean, I eat well at 29 carbs. But if I know my maximum carbs a day is 29, and I've recorded and I can see that I'm at 20, then I need to be very careful what I select to eat the rest of the day. But it's very doable because I dropped 30 pounds very easily um, last year doing the keto diet. And for eight weeks, I didn't even have one nibble that was not keto. And it worked for my body. And so all I have to do is get back to that, right? It's easy. Not the second time. <laughs> When you try to do something the second time, you remember all the, the challenges and struggles of the first time. It actually can feel harder. But if I go to the altar in the morning and say, Lord, you have called me to do something and you call me to not do something. So I'm going to place that. I'm going to place those things on the altar right now. So then you don't get tripped up through the day. Now, you will make a mistake. Mistakes happen. Two times you make a mistake, that's a choice. Let's just be honest with ourselves. Once is a mistake. Twice is a choice. But I want to teach you how to walk in power. 
with this. And I want to share with you about um, when I was in college, I was a young bride. Well, I was married for about a year and a half. So, I mean, still a young bride. Year and a half, two years. It, it was closer to two years because I was pregnant with my son. It's not our first child. It's our second child, our first baby. We miscarried uh, about uh, two, two months, three, three months after our first anniversary. So when we were married for about 15 months, <clears throat> we lost our first child. So this is my second child. I'm still in college because, you know, pregnancy, miscarriage, recovery, <laughs> pregnancy, um, high-risk pregnancy meant I lost some days. Um, could not get a, a, a temporary handicap sticker. But when I would walk for distances across campus, I would go into labor, preterm labor. So it was catch-22. So I didn't always get to class, but I was an excellent student, and I was able to manage. So I want to tell you about a non-traditional student I met in one of my creative writing classes. Uh, most of the students there were single, fresh out of high school. I was married, fresh out of high school, um, pregnant, which was not traditional. But a lady in our class had gray hair, and I could tell that she was an older lady. And she shared with me that she had been widowed, and so she decided to come back to school, which was awesome. And um, I think because I was married, we had more in common. Because I was going to be a mom, we had more in common. So, um, you know, we kind of gravitated toward each other. So she was sharing with me about marriage. And she said, you know, when my husband and I got married, I was a young bride like you. And my mom told me, now, if you and your husband ever get in any kind of an argument, don't you tell him I'm going home. Because you are home. And if you come here, I'm not letting you in. I'm sending you back. That was for the protection of that covenant. Because remember the word the Bible says that a man is to leave his mother and father and cleave, cleave to his wife and become one flesh. So leave we know. Cleave, you know, when you're holding tightly to something so you don't lose it. Like if you were if your wife were hanging over a cliff, you would hang all of dear, li dear life. That's what cleaving is like. And become one flesh because that is a process. It's a process of surrender and of growth and of love and choosing love every day no matter what. So when she said that to me, it was so much wisdom. And it was biblical. And now you and I, are to be with Christ in a committed covenant way so that we are never leaving him and he will certainly never leave us or forsake us. But we must be willing to kill the oxen, to burn the plow, to cook the oxen on that plow and feed the people when God calls us so that we don't turn back. So I want to share with you, what do you need to do or to burn up on your altar to live a godly life that he's called you to? I just shared some of my struggles. My struggles are not necessarily, you know, sexual sin or, I mean, mine are socially acceptable. Let's just face it. The Bible tells us to buffet our bodies. <laughs> That's a Southern Baptist joke. Um, but, you know, overeating is a sin. It's gluttony. The Bible calls it. And unless we tear out that page, we've got to deal with it. That might not be your thing. You might have more trouble with, I don't know, spending money or keep or not spending money. You might be a hoarder because you can't trust God. Um which has the same root, honestly, the Lord told me, as being a thief. Because you can't trust God with money. You can't trust God to provide for you. Um, you might have pornography sin. You might have other sin. Um, doesn't mean your sin is worse than mine. Anything that I do that will separate me from obeying what God commands is a sin. doesn't matter how you know socially acceptable it might be. But what do you need to burn up on your altar to God? 
I'm going to challenge you to start your day by blessing the Lord, worshiping the Lord, and remembering all the great words he said to you. And then take that sticky note of whatever it is that you're supposed to surrender or that you're supposed to walk in and, and put it up. And I want you to look at it every day before you leave your bedroom. And then you're going to be more and more successful every day. Because living the successful Christian life requires death. It requires us to die to our flesh. Like, oh boy, I wanted that cake. Right, and last night it was Turkish delight. Okay, sugar, right? You can see sugar's the thing, <clears throat> but if sugar, which in itself is not a sin, will cause me not to please God with what He's called me to do, and He's told me very specifically to get ready for something and what it looks like in terms of my weight, and I was like, oh, that was aggressive. <laughs> and I have weighed that much, I, that was kind of my fat weight. When my sister says, you're fat, that was my fat weight. I wish I were my fat weight right now, right? Um, but I've decided today that I'm going to die to myself. I'm going to do what the Lord has asked me to do. Because this morning, and the reason I ran a little late, is I got my huge marching orders from the Lord around 4 o'clock. And wow, um, we're all going to need it. I'm just a tool for the kingdom of God. And however large tool or small the tool, I don't care. I'm just going to do what God has asked me to do. And he's told me something very specific today. So uh, I'm just excited and looking forward to it. But we must die to our flesh. Now, how do you know where you're living? If you are living from Adam, you'll fear death. You'll perhaps even hear the voice of the enemy instead of the voice of God. But if you live from Christ and his death and his burial and his resurrection and his ascension and his return on earth with his physical man body, you can ask God and he will tell you plans that he has for your life. So what has God asked you to do that you've not done yet? And this is preaching to the choir here. And then why haven't you done it? For me, it's partly strategy. I didn't have a good strategy. But what I've been asking the Lord for the past two, maybe three months is, Lord, give me your blueprint. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a directions follower. I'm a checklist queen. I've gone in. I've, I've created organizations out of nothing many, many times. A blue tape, I mean, 501c3 with, you know, coordinating with CPA. I mean, uh, I'm pretty good at that, right? Um, I do have a legal mindset. I've been told by many people I should be an attorney. I've been told by people I treat them as if I'm an attorney. And I don't mean to like, you know, badger the witness on the stand, but if we're going to walk, if we're going to say we walk in truth, let's walk in truth, right? But let's get back to why haven't we obeyed God? And I think it's so intriguing to me that the Bible tells us about Elisha. He was wanting the mantle of Elijah. And Elijah said, well, if you're with me when I die, I'll give it to you. Well, that's about provoking, right? That means you're going to have to stay by me side by side to learn everything I know, to see and experience everything I do, and to have everything I have, it's going to require that high level of commitment. And so it's always puzzled me why Elisha did not sell his oxen and his plow. But now I know. He couldn't because if he had sold his oxen and sold his plow, I mean, I come from a poverty mindset because I grew up in extreme poverty And uh, there was money, trust, there was money. (laughs) I didn't get the benefit of it um, at all. But um, I didn't have regular food every day. And I grew up with winters with no heat uh, as a punishment because of using too much electricity. Uh, So the electricity to the house would be cut off and children didn't know how to turn that back on. Uh, So we, we suffered, made me stronger. It didn't make all of us stronger. I became stronger. A couple of us became stronger. Um, 
But to me, when I first read in the Old Testament, excuse me, I need to drink right quick. My favorite little Turkish soda water with lemon. And I said right quick, that reveals my southern roots. Um, when I read about Elisha running back to his oxen and his plow, killing the oxen, breaking up the plow and burning it, cooking the oxen and feeding the people, um, I overlooked the feeding the people part. And I said to myself, how wasteful. He could have at least sold the oxen and sold the plow, make money. Then we've had something, you know, for the road until last week. And the Lord showed me that when he killed the oxen, he couldn't have bought them back. He couldn't have said, well, this didn't work. I'm going back to plowing. He had to, he had to kill the oxen. He didn't sell the plow because he could have bought it back. He could have said, well, this is not working. I'm going back, back to farming. No. It's like the lady in college who said, my mother told me if you ever have an argument with your husband, do not tell him you're going home because you are home. Once you decide to obey the Lord, whatever is your oxen, whatever is your plow, I want to challenge you to break it up and burn it. So there's no going back. That honors God. So for me today, obviously I have to have not, not bring things into the house that I'm not supposed to eat. And I go out, I'm not going to order things I'm not supposed to eat, right? I had a guest who brought me something yummy and I succumbed to that. Um, and I, but now I know in the future, if in the beginning of the day, cause I never know what my day is going to look like. It, it comes together as it moves along. I mean, some things are hard scheduled, but most things are not. Um, but since the Lord has told me very specifically, and for me, it's about food. I don't have trouble with, you know, some other issues. Um, I'm not a coward. I don't have sexual immorality in my body or in my mind. I'm not watching things I shouldn't watch. I'm not listening to things I shouldn't hear. Um, you know, so I, I'm not imagining things I shouldn't imagine. So I think that's how I'm, I actually more clearly hear from God is because I've dedicated my senses to the Lord and he speaks to me. He shows me things visually. He, he talks to me in words. I have heard the audible voice of God and it went through me like electricity. <laughs> and I turned to see who the giant was in my room because I felt the voice filling the space. Um, I guess it was sound waves and it went literally through my body, but we need to forget the former things. So you messed up, right? Today's a new day. This is the head of the new year. This is January. This is all about rededicating yourself to what God has called you to do and to be for his kingdom and for his glory. So forget it. If you messed up yesterday, okay, I'm going to forget it. Um, I'm going to definitely put my sticky note up, 29 grams of carbs, no caffeine. And outside of that, I mean, it's pretty easy, right? If you just do those two things, it's not hard. So I know basically my favorite things, what I can eat, what I should eat. And I do know to eat on time because my blood sugar can drop a little bit and take me about 30 minutes to recover once I've had a snack. Um, but forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing is what the Lord says. Isaiah 43, 18 and 9. Okay. So whatever you did yesterday, it's gone. God's mercies are new every day. Be honest and truthful with yourself about what you're called to do. And burn that oxen and those plows. If you keep running from things in your life because they're not how you like them, you take a really good look at yourself and see what needs to change. And then ask Holy Spirit to help you change it. And I will tell you, the grass is only greener on the other side because you haven't messed it up yet. So I hope this has been encouraging to you. That was my intention. But I want to teach you how to live a transformed life. And I learned this past week what it's like to put something on the altar, even at your table. Like, you know, the Lord has called me to a, a certain weight. 
So in order to accomplish that, I know, I know what it needs to accomplish that. So I put that bread on the altar and I don't eat it. I put that caffeine on the altar. I don't drink it. I put that sugar, of course, carbs. I put that sugar on the altar and I don't eat it. But I start at the beginning of the day with my altar to God. Now, in the Old Testament, there were fancy, you know, rocks that were stacked up to show that this was an altar to God. So if you'd like, in your garden out front, get yourself a rock or more than one rock, and make yourself just a little visual reminder of your altar to the Lord. Dedicate your house to the Lord. Dedicate your marriage to the Lord. Dedicate your relationship as mother to the Lord. Dedicate your relationship as father to the Lord. Dedicate your relationship as friend, as sister, as brother, as a business leader to the Lord, and then the Lord will reveal more and more and more. So once you, you know, caring things, right? These things need to be on the altar. So let's say this represents um, sugar. Put it on the altar. Now my hand is emptier that I can receive from the Lord. And I really believe that this is a principle he wants us to grasp. To slaughter the oxen, burn the plow, and live a transformed life. So I'd just like to pray for you now. Lord, I thank you so much for the wisdom and revelation that your word contains. That we can go to your word and we can read your own heart for us. And I thank you, Lord, as we consecrate, consecrate our thinking, our minds, our wills, our emotions, our what we see, what we hear, and what we do, what we taste, <laughs> what we eat, what we um, sense. As we consecrate these things to you, Lord, and give them to you, you can change us from the inside out, which is where a true permanent change occurs. And I know that we have a commitment, Lord. We have a part. We have a responsibility. And I thank you for leading us to take responsibility. But today is new. Lord, today I put on the altar caffeine. I put on the altar um, 31 grams and up. And um, that means I'll have to watch what I eat, Lord. But I thank you that I know the results, the results of this commitment of putting the things on the altar you've asked me to place on the altar will result in my body looking like you've told me it needs to look in order for the next step of what you have for me. And I thank you for, for loving me enough to protecting me to know that I'm not a vain person, but I know that people will be more honorable and respecting of me and what I say if I look like I am disciplined, if I look like I am committed, if I look like I am sacrificial, Lord. And I thank you that for me, not for anyone else, Lord, for me, that's what you've called me to do. And I want to honor you. I want to show you, Jesus, that I love you by doing what you command. And I pray for all of my friends who are hearing your heart through me today to feel and do the same, Lord, that you would lead them to know which oxen to burn and to break up their plow and burn the plow so that they don't turn back. Because Jesus was very, very clear. If you turn back, you're not worthy. I was reading that in Luke 9. So, Father, let us not turn back. Let us be full speed ahead for your kingdom purposes that we just surrender to you, Father, for you to love others through us and for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven through us. In Jesus' name. I bless you guys. Have a great day. Hey, if you want to message me a screenshot of your little sticky notes with what you've put on your altar to the Lord, I would love that. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.